Growing up poor is no sin, yet people often treat you as if it is one. DeMarco Bailey was a young boy who had a dream, but he was poor. He couldn't afford the resources to follow his dream. Then a complete stranger saw him and did something shocking. DeMarco was from a poor family. He was the only son born to loving and nurturing parents, but they were struggling to make ends meet. They could barely afford their basic needs. Spending money on luxury items was therefore not in the cards. However, what they lacked in financial resources, they would more than make up for. They provided a stable home to grow up in, and they were emotionally supportive to their son. DeMarco loved to participate in sports. He had the will to succeed and would therefore give his all when he participated in any games. His conduct on the field was quite aggressive as he was always pushing to succeed. With such determination, he would often not consider his own safety. In eighth grade, DeMarco ended up getting two concussions. As his mother deemed his behavior too reckless, she banned him from playing football in his freshman year. This was her way of looking out for her son as he was still immature and often endangered himself. Growing up poor has its own unique challenges, especially amongst your peer group. You could be subject to ridicule. DeMarco wore clothing that had seen better days. This didn't bother him that much, but it gave bullies the opportunity to make fun of him. Even for a person with a strong mind, this could be very challenging. Some days at school were hard, but focusing on his life dream would make things bearable. One way to deal with bullies is to succeed in life. That was the direction DeMarco took. At the age of 15, he formulated his dream to make it onto a sophomore football team for 2016. The parents were not sure what school to pick and what they could afford. DeMarco was willing to train hard and do whatever it took to realize his dream. In most homes, when a child takes an interest in a specific sport, Parents would go out and buy the necessary equipment for the child to succeed. Although DeMarco's parents would have loved to do exactly that, they simply couldn't afford any equipment. Neither could they afford to pay for a gym where their son could get some supervision and proper training. Only with proper training would his mother allow him to play football again. Many teenagers do not want to be active and would spend their days playing video games and sitting on the couch. This was something DeMarco had no appeal for. He was physically small. In order for him to be successful, he had to start a training program to increase his strength and start building some muscles. DeMarco had a very positive mindset. He never blamed his parents or his circumstances. He was determined to succeed. Life owed him nothing. His motto was to work hard to achieve success. Success did not fall into his lap. He had to be very creative to reach his goals. Therefore, he would look around the neighborhood and find some items lying around that could double as training equipment. Waste items became his gym equipment for strength training. Initially, it was hard, but as he became stronger, things became easier. DeMarco didn't own any special training clothes. His worn-out sneakers were not well suited for training, but that was all he had. Not owning the right brand names to train in wasn't going to stop him. DeMarco's parents saw his resilience and they were proud of their son, but they were keeping a close eye on him. They would continue to provide him with the support he needed, but they would not allow him to be reckless when it came to physical health. If only there was a way to access training and support. Nearby, Earl Davis was living out his life as a football coach for the Metro Youth Sports in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He was dedicated to the development of talented young football players. What bothered him most was that he often had to train lazy athletes. These boys took the opportunities they had for granted. They lacked the inner motivation to push themselves to new heights. His own two sons were also involved in the game of football and he loved to show them the ropes. They got the opportunity to practice in a gym, increase their strength and to become excellent players. Sometimes it felt like they had it too easy and he wished they would be motivated to put in maximum effort to succeed. One day, on his way to an interview, Davis drove past a small figure at the side of the road. It took him a while to realize what was going on. There was a boy, small in stature, dragging two tires chained together behind them. He was running all the time. The boy was wearing old clothes, but what Earl immediately noticed was his determination. He was also intrigued by the resourcefulness of the boy to invent his own training equipment. Winding down his car's window, 
he started talking to the boy. DeMarco told Davis that he was willing to talk, but that he could not slow down. If Davis was willing to continue driving, they could talk. DeMarco had no time to waste. That afternoon, an amazing story unfolded in front of Davis's eyes. Here was a boy, poor but determined to succeed. He had such a respectful and positive attitude. He expected very little from people and was focused on achieving his goals. Davis decided to give DeMarco his name and number and invited him to join him and his two boys at their gym for workouts. There was ample equipment that could assist him developed in a way that could benefit his football career. With sleds, parachutes, resistance bands and weights, he could be exposed to the correct strength training routines. Davis had a hard time convincing DeMarco to stand still for a moment so that he could take a picture. The purpose of the picture was to show it to his own two boys, teaching them a life lesson. He wanted to convey to them that they should be thankful for all the opportunities they had and hope to inspire them to start working harder at their game. Now they have seen someone who had all the odds stacked against them, but that was still determined to succeed. That evening, Davis could not get DeMarco out of his mind. He couldn't go to sleep and just forget about this boy. Being a complete stranger to the boy, he decided to do something shocking. The poor boy who was ridiculed and laughed at would experience some life-changing events. Davis decided to share this boy's story on Facebook. The initial goal of sharing was to inspire other youngsters to work hard. He wanted to show them that anybody that was willing to put in the work could succeed. Often with such inspirational stories, people eagerly react to the posts. The post and picture instantly went viral. Within a few hours, there were nearly 35,000 shares and 1,400 comments. People from far and wide were inspired by the boy. Some of the comments urged Davis to take further action. This boy deserved to get some real support. After suggestions of starting a GoFundMe campaign, Davis took action. Soon, the target of collecting $5,000 was exceeded. The funds could now be used to buy training equipment. DeMarco was extremely thankful for the equipment. As more people became aware of the boy, they would continue to send equipment, clothing and gifts. This became a bit overwhelming for DeMarco. After thinking for a short while, he started giving the extra items away to friends and charities. He would only keep what he really needed. He was assured of his family's continued support and knew that they would still continue to provide for his basic needs. We're not sure if DeMarco ever made it into the big leagues playing football, what we learn from his life is that we cannot choose the circumstances we're born into, but we can work at our dreams irrespective of the circumstances. With a resilient and positive attitude, you can achieve amazing results and succeed against all odds. Let us know if you liked the story of DeMarco. Give us a thumbs up in the comments below and please subscribe to our channel not to miss out on similar stories.